It's an honor and a privilege for me to introduce our keynote speaker of the day. She's come here all the way from Malawi with her husband, the former Chief Justice of Malawi, Richard Banda. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Her Excellency, Dr. Joyce Banda. Excellency Chief Justice Richard Banda, is he retired? Uh, Tan and Bill Austin, Bill is here. Members of the family of the Stark Foundation. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I feel greatly honored to be at this very important event. Please allow me to convey my heartfelt gratitude and appreciation to Bill and Tan Austin, the founders of Starkey Hearing Foundation, for inviting me to be part of this very important event and for the warm reception accorded to me and my delegation since we arrived in Malawi, sorry, in Minneapolis. I was told yesterday that I needed to focus more on my speech on the power of partnership. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, when I received the invitation from Starkey Foundation, I did not hesitate to respond positively. The event that is driven by Starkey's passion, commitment and desire to improve the plight of people with hearing problems is very close to my heart. This is a segment that constitutes one of the most disadvantaged and marginalized segments of our societies. A segment that is not only marginalized but also ignored in many of our societies and subjected to all forms of stigma and abuse because in many societies hearing impairment is a condition that has long been regarded as it is irreversible. Children with hearing impairment are the hardest hit. Compared with other children, children with hearing impairment are more at greater risk of illiteracy and poverty. They are the ones who will most likely never go to school due to lack of necessary facilities and systems. Many of them are hidden away making it even harder for social services to reach them, hidden away by the people and the communities that are supposed to protect and cherish them. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, through the World May Hear program, Starkey Foundation has placed a smile on the face of a segment of our population that has been denied a smile and been a subject of neglect, abuse, and segregation. Through the World May Hear program, that person in my village now has a chance to hear the laughter of a friend and the rain pattering on the roof of a hot summer day. In many developing countries, some of us know about the availability of hearing aids but because of the high cost of such facilities, it is a matter of accepting one's condition and resigning to one's fate. In Malawi, the cost of a set of hearing aid is currently at $1,100. And distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this is a country where the D GDP per capita is estimated at $900. And with well over 60% of his population living on less than a dollar a day. The gift of hearing, therefore, is highly appreciated. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, looking back to over 30 years in my life of development, empowering the poor and activism, I came to realize that often the success of the programs and initiatives that I stood for 
must be attributed to a power outside of my means. That something greater and more powerful than my resolve was responsible for the captivating of people's hearts and summoning them to a greater future that I knew was the destiny of Malawi. It is humbling, therefore, to admit, and I believe that in this realization lies the true philanthropic service and all forms of social empowerment, the power of partnership. Partnership that gives hope to the most disadvantaged segments of the people of our societies. Some years ago, a friend of mine from Alabama gave me 18 sets of hearing aids. I donated them to a school of 50 children. I shall forever remember the smile on those 18 and the tears on the face of the rest of the class. In March this year, I got to hear that Bill and Tan were coming back to Malawi. And they, they completed the first two hearing mission in that country, fitting 1,937 children and adults with hearing aids. From March through June 2014, the Malawi aftercare team, led by Dr. Wakisa Mulafu of the Malawi College of Medicine in Blanta, took immediate action, providing follow-up care to 1,264 of the hearing aid recipients. Since 2009 to date, a total of 8,269 people with hearing problems have been served and a total of 16,526 hearing aids have been fitted. All the Starke patients in Malawi have monthly access to follow-up care where patients can receive additional counseling, batteries and services to replace or repair hearing aids and ear modes when needed. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please give them a round a round of applause for this service. <laughs> Thanks to Starkey Foundation, Malawians now know that they no longer live in a country where there's no hope for the deaf. Mothers and fathers do not have to fear having a child that cannot hear. All who have seen the ones deaf now hearing are empowered to hope that it is possible for all people born with a physical or social limitation to realize their full potential. As you may have seen from this picture, this took place in State House. And I was sitting at the driving seat as president of the country. And I did this deliberately because I wanted to demonstrate that it starts with the citizen number one, sitting in the driving seat to show that the people with disability, people who can't hear, who can't see, who can't walk, are a very important part of our society and it is our duty to care for them. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here to celebrate Starkey's unwavering commitment to service to humanity. Our presence at this gathering is a calling to all of us to partner with and join hands with Starker Foundation to help make the world a better place for all to live in. Imagine how much difference you will make in the life of a person whom you help to restore his or her hearing. You are invited to be part of the Starker's empowering and driving force as it reaches out to the people in need of our support. This world will be a better place for all to live in when we all realize that there, is, there are others that live in conditions that are far from satisfactory. Conditions that are not only unacceptable, but conditions that have to be changed by you and I. As caring global citizens, we cannot afford to look the other way. I have spent my life advocating on behalf of the poor, the oppressed, and the marginalized. 
As a social justice and human rights activist, I have a deep appreciation for the challenges of those on the margins of society. I've seen firsthand the dangers and consequences resulting from indifference, intolerance, and uh, most alarmingly, inaction. It is pleasing that with increased levels of awareness, activism, and interventions, the plight facing people with hearing problems and indeed people with all other forms of disabilities throughout the world is only now beginning to be fully recognized. To me, the subject of people with disability is a matter of calling. During my time as president of Malawi, issues concerning people with disability moved to the mainstream of government policies and programs. I passed the disability bill within months of my taking over as president in order to promote and safeguard the rights and living standards of persons with disabilities. The act replaced the Handicapped Persons Act of 1971, which did not provide for any rights to people with disability. I was one of the few heads of state and government who were invited to speak at the Global Development Summit held in South Korea in 2013. Furthermore, under my presidency, Malawi hosted an international African summit on intellectual disability held from the 7th to the 10th of February 2014. Malawi became the first African country to host such a conference. The outcome of the forum are expected to input into the 2015 development agenda. During the World Disability Days, I hosted a cross-section of people with disability at State House for me to interact with them and better understand their challenges. I also appointed a person with disability, an activist and champion, to be the minister responsible for elderly and disability affairs. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I was asked to speak about the power of partnership. And so allow me to give, as I wind up, a few examples of what can happen when we partner. I will give personal experiences. And if I bore you, please just, you can, you can, you can doze off, but... Uh, I started my work in 1987, believing truly that women of Africa deserved better. And I went to USID and told them my story. And they sent me here to this country. And I ended up here in Minnesota in February 1987. I didn't attend a single meeting. I've never been anywhere as cold as that. But we went through, we went across America. At the end of that time, I realized that there was power in unity and that I needed to mobilize fellow African women to begin to address issues of disadvantaged women on the continent. I thought I was starting something very small in my country, a club of 100 women. To cut a long story short, by the end of two years, I had mobilized 20,000 women and we wanted our rights. USID provided the first money for institutional development cap uh, um, capacity building and uh, for provision of small loans to poor women. By the end of 1997, we had provided finance to 50,000 women. It was the strongest rural network of women in the Republic of Malawi. I was honored by the Hunger Project the price money for that award was 100,000. We shared the award with President Chisan of Mozambique. I took my 50,000 back to Malawi and started the Joyce Banda Foundation. Fast forward, the Joyce Banda Foundation has got three schools, is providing nursery education to 30,000 orphans, provides small business opportunities to 550 
thousand women, opportunities to 850,000 youth, secondary education to 3,500, and 500 students are going to university through the Joyce Panda Foundation. I stood for election in, 19, in 2004, was elected member of parliament, and was appointed minister of responsible for women and children, served as my country's foreign minister from 2006 to, 2000, from 2006 to 2009, championed the passing of the domestic violence bill, and ended up vice president of my country and president of that country. I want us to connect that to the one support that I received from USAID. That, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, is the power of partnership. Number two, I was having my fourth born child and was going to die giving birth. And where I come from, that time 1,200 women were dying giving birth out of every 100,000. I suffered what they call postpartum hemorrhage. Thank God my husband had a friend who was a gynecologist, came and saved my life. I made up my mind that I was going to spend my life saving life because it's not fair that women of Africa must die giving life. When here, in this country, when a woman becomes pregnant, it's a, it's, it's, it's a time of joy. You begin to prepare. A baby is coming and you shop around. Where I come from, it's a time of anxiety. You may come or not come back. You may die giving birth. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are 50% of this world. Women bring life. And we are 50%, but when I last checked, we also brought into this world the other half. <laughs> The moment I became president of the Republic of Malawi, I started what they call a presidential initiative on safe motherhood and uh, mobilized partners from across the world and mobilized the private sector in Malawi and built holding shelters at 22 hospitals to make sure that women get to the clinic earlier so that they don't waste time walking to the clinic, because that's when they die. When I came in as president, 675 women were dying, giving birth, out of every 100,000. As of last week, U A U United U UNDP has confirmed that Malawi has reduced women dying, giving birth, from that 675 to 460 in 24 months. We didn't do it alone. It was a partnership between the private sector in Malawi and ourselves, but also with our partners from all over the world. The final one is this partnership we are talking about today. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I came 10,000 miles to tell you that we in Africa are very grateful to the Starkey Hearing Foundation. <laughs> I came 10,000 miles to tell you that there's good leadership on the continent of Africa. We are not just shooting each other and fighting. There are some Joyce Banders there that are providing good leadership. We have no support. We depend on partnership. But we depend on partners that must come and recognize that we are human beings, that being poor is not being stupid, that we know how to change our situation. <laughs> that we know how to change our situation, but we are just looking for partnership, partners that will not come and think they can do it for us. But that partners that will come and engage us and work with us because we know what we must do. You've seen 
pictures today. Where President Kikweta of Tanzania is talking to Bill and Tan. They are working together. You see, you can see that in Malawi. But what really touches me, and that I want to share with you, is that this is a couple that is not acting. Did you see the hugs and the kisses? <laughs> they come, they respect us, and they love us, and we hug, and we love, and we sing, and we dance. And I want to thank all of you who are making that possible. And may God bless you. Dr. Joyce Banda, an amazing inspiration to us all. And I could tell you personally, she, she leads by example. She spent nearly the entire day on the day of fittings with us, fitting hearing aids all day with her team and uh, helping these children and these adults receive the gift of hearing. We are proud to partner together with you. Thank you so much for sharing those remarks.